Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion on this, the last Sunday of the Trinity. Just a couple of points to um, draw to your attention on our newsletter. A reminder that uh, our All Souls and Memorial services will be taking place uh, on uh, next week. On Sunday afternoon, the annual remembrance service for which we are asking people to um, apply for tickets so that we can appropriately seat people. And then on Monday evening at 8 o'clock at St Francis and on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock here, all uh, services of Holy Communion for all souls. And if you would like a a name of someone to be remembered at one of those services, would you please add them to the list that is at the back of church and they will be collated after Wednesday this week. Magazines for November are now ready for collection and distribution as well. So we sit now as we listen to our first hymn through all the changing scenes of life. Spirit. The Lord be with you. 
As we remind ourselves we've come into God's presence, we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to give glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we remain standing, let us pray. O God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse 
tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? What of the commands do we most need to hear and put into practice? The question put to Jesus came from a Pharisee lawyer in the context of gathering opposition and a troubled world. We are told it was to test him, but questions about the commandments were constantly debated among the religious leaders. In the code that he was referring to, there were 613 commandments. A little over a third were positive, you must, you should, and 365 negative, you must not, you should not. And Jesus began with the positive, the traditionally accepted rabbinic summary of the law, which came from the book of Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. This was so deeply ingrained in the teaching of the religion that it could be described as creed recited twice daily as the Shema prayer. But then Jesus added, and love your neighbour as yourselves. This came from the book of Leviticus. And the entirety of what God required was summed up in these two interdependent commands. It did not diminish the law, but was the foundation on which everything else would stand. And it did shift the focus from arguing specifics of rules to what underpins faithful living. Love God. Love your neighbour. In recent months in our troubled world, we have been reminded that we are living in times where autonomy is prized, but we are required to obey, abide by rules that affect our freedom and our choices for the good of all. A world where there is an ever-increasing range of ways of communicating, 
but a paradoxical level of loneliness and isolation. Voices crying out to be noticed, but divisions and inequalities causing many to be forgotten. We see and we hear things here and in the wider world, and we want to believe that love will overcome hate. But we question where the evidence for that is. And in the context of our world, we might ask the same question, which commandment is the greatest? What do we most need to hear, put into practice? And the answer is the same as when it was put to Jesus and it has been throughout history. Love God, love your neighbour. But what does that mean in practice? Most translations of the Deuteronomy text have it as love with heart, soul and strength. But Jesus spoke of mind. Well, perhaps we should not get too caught up in determining the exact translation. But maybe this was deliberate. Jesus was talking to a teacher of the law, someone who had devoted his mind to developing knowledge and ability to debate. It was as if Jesus was saying to him, bring all that you are, every aspect of your personality, everything that you are passionate about, and use that to love God. Loving God in this way does not happen by accident. It is intentional. And it demands to be worked out in practice. It does not answer all the religious and ethical questions we have in our lives. We've got to continue to wrestle with those but it does give us a guide to determining our choices and our actions as we seek to practice this command. I remember one time in a Bible study group, someone said the problem was they could love God, but found it very difficult to love themselves at times. So loving their neighbor as themselves didn't quite make sense. Another thought, loving yourself sounded selfish and was confused because she had always been taught to put others first. So perhaps we might hear the words slightly differently. Love God and love your neighbour as you yourself are loved by him. Loving God with all that we are is a response to the love of God for us. And as God's love abides in us, grows in us, it will lead us to reflect and show that love to others. The two parts of the command cannot be separated. But we begin by knowing ourselves to be loved unconditionally with all our strengths and weaknesses without limit and then seek to show that kind of love in the way that we live our lives. There is perhaps a temptation to think that loving our neighbour in practice means doing things for them. After all, Jesus spoke of showing our love for him by how we behave towards others. When I was sick, you visited me, clothed me, fed me. For as much as you did it to the least of these, you did it for me. So for some, loving our neighbour will be in using the skills and intellect we have, or the physical strength and abilities, and the choices of work and calling to a particular way of life. We might not be called into quite such dramatic and life-changing ways as Paul was when he followed that command, but he began by loving God with all his heart. He knew God's unconditional love for him, and therefore, as he told the Thessalonians, he cared about them so deeply that he was determined to share with them not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves. So instead for us, 
It may be that we show our love for God by doing something to make a difference in our own communities and in the lives of those that we come into contact with. Or perhaps it is by transformative effort to bring about change for some of the bigger problems and issues we see in our world. All of these are ways of loving our neighbour as ourselves. And we are thankful for all those who use their gifts in this way, but it does not have to be action of that kind. And no one is exempt from following this command. In one of the sessions of a diocesan conference a few years back now, Dr. Sam Wells of St. Martin's in the Fields encouraged us to reflect on the shape of the ministry of Jesus, which we might take as a pattern for our faithful living. He suggested that only 1% of the ministry of Jesus was about working for or doing things for people. 9%, he said, was working with others, and 90%, 90, was about being with, building relationships of friendship or compassion, walking alongside others in times of difficulty, suffering or pain or trouble. I don't know how he reached those percentages, but the point is there is also, there is also a way of loving our neighbour that is about being with them, walking alongside them. And this is probably much less visible. It can be more challenging because we may not be able to solve their problems or do anything or even be physically present with them. Paul could not be physically present all the time among those he shared the gospel with, but he was with them walked with them nonetheless. He did it by writing countless letters, only some of which we have as examples, to encourage and support, and he prayed constantly for them. Or it could be like the friend I met earlier this week whose heart for social justice had led her to become a befriender to asylum seekers. She's never met the person that she has befriended, but walks alongside them in their long journey towards a safe place to live by weekly phone calls. All the many hundreds of phone calls made and messages sent, notes sent, flowers left on doorsteps by people in this church, giving assurance that you are not forgotten as together we walk these difficult times. These two are all ways of loving our neighbour as ourselves. What of all the commands do we most need to hear and put into practice now in our time? Love God. Love your neighbour as yourself. Continue growing in your love for God and let him show you the way he wants you to live out his love for others. So let us now stand to profess our love and our faith in the living God using the words on your reading sheet. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And
the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to God our Father. Please be seated. Loving God, open our ears to hear your will for us. Open our hearts to share your longing for the world to be saved. We pray for your church throughout the world. Forgive our divisions, heal our wounds, unite us in love and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, so that the world may see your love in us and know that you are God. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Father, for the many blessings we receive as your followers in our parish of Boxmoor. Thank you for Mike and Ruth, our priests, and for all who serve you and our community whether seen or unseen, in so many loving ways. Rule in all our hearts and lives and help us to live by your standard of self-giving love. Lord, in your mercy. Father, increase our desire to enter into one another's suffering and hardship, to share the world's resources with one another and to recognize all humanity as our brothers and sisters. Give wisdom to all who have power over the nations as this world is racked by strife and sickness. Give them the courage to set aside their differences and work together for the common good. We pray for our own nation in all its turmoil and for ourselves that we may be constructive and unselfish in these troubling times. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, we hold before you our homes, our places of work, our schools, and all other communities to which we belong. In a moment of quiet, we name before you any person or situation we are finding difficult asking for your loving wisdom, strength, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, in the quiet and the safety of this beautiful holy place, we ask your blessing on all people who face this coming day in suffering of any kind, the sick, the lonely, the lost, the anxious, the depressed, the exhausted, the despairing, and the dying. And now we bring to you those we know, those on our newsletter, those others known to us personally, and those known only to you. Show us, Father, where we can bring your loving comfort. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and a sure knowledge of your loving, healing presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we remember before you all those who have died, especially today, Valerie Smith, Brenda Reedman, and John Hutton, and those grieving for them those on our newsletter whose year's mind falls at this time, and all the others whom we love but see no longer. We thank you for our own treasured memories of them, for all that was good in their lives, and for the sure hope that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters not able to be here with us today, May we remain one in love of you, of one another, and of our neighbour. Lord, 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we greet each other with a wave of peace. And we sit as the table is prepared and listen to our offertory hymn, Lord for the Years. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. 
so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup. He gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We listen to our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.